Kimberly keeping real coming at you hot like fire. Um, it's good to be out here breathing the fresh air on Hurdle Avenue, praising God. It's wonderful. I want you to listen to this message. The message talks about can, can God prepare you? We're coming up in a season where we have to walk circumspectly before God and we don't have time to be flip-flopping and making mistakes and running in our flesh. We have to submit ourselves to the spirit of the living God so that God can stand up big in us. Listen to this message. I believe it will bless you. So that means that God is already moving in the flow. He wants us to know that he is with us and that he is doing something. And I was just so excited in my spirit. I said, you know, I don't even know what I, you know, I know 381, I know 12 apostles, I know 12 is the number of government, but you know, even I was still pressing in, you know. I felt like the Holy Ghost said, Kimberly, go to sleep, because I ain't telling you nothing. You can forget it, you're too nosy. I'll let you know at the time that you need to know, amen? But all you need to know now is that the Holy Ghost is with you. You have the favor of God with you. How do we know we have the favor of God? I think, I don't know if it was Mama, Dad Campbell, when they were talking to Esther Guya, some I don't know if her or if it was Mama said, don't, lift, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's free. That's how you know you got favor. It's free a good price. This, this is our Jewish man in the house. It's free a good price. Nice. <laughs> it's the best it's the best price free is good amen and am I somebody who's giving you a free house you just would be like oh that's free you know how they do extreme makeover they say move the bus move the bus you see how all the people be falling out in the street and crying and everything like that free that's how we know that we have the uh, the anointing of God with us because the favor of God is following us we don't have to. We don't have to deplete our bank account. We don't have to pay for lights. Winter time is coming up. We don't have to pay for gas. Let me say that again. We don't have to pay for gas. Okay. Let me say it again. We don't have to pay for gas. Nash, thank you. National fuel. No bill for the winter time. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so, God, God Himself. And I just kept on saying, oh, Lord, you just, you just, you just, every little thing, you say, you know, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. And this is just the first week of our consecration. Oh, Lord Jesus. You know, what's going to happen by the third week? But I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited that his presence is with us. And I think sometimes we get used to being under this arc of safety. And even my children. My children have no idea. They think they know. But they don't know how it is. They don't know what it is to be out in these streets and don't have no safety and covering over you. I've been out there. I know what it is. It's doggy dog dog. If I turn my back, I'm your friend. If I turn my back, if I can steal from you, I'm going to steal from you. I'm going to get what I got to get. What? For myself. Self-preservation. That's how it is out in this world. But when you're under the ark of the safety, let the blood prevail. I plead the blood. I bind the devil. God has a hedge of protection around you. And only certain things can come in your you know, immediate space. God's not going to let everything come up on you at one time. He ain't going to do it. Because the Bible says he only gives you what you can what? Bear. That you're able to bear it. He's not going to put so much on you that it sinks you. Some people can't get delivered because they don't want to trust in God. But if you trust in God, you will be delivered. I'm not telling you you might. You will be. That's a fact. You will be. If you're going through and you depend on God, you will be delivered. God started with us on September 7th. But when this consecration came, God said, okay, now, now I can speak with loud voice because now you're petitioning the throne and now I can talk to you and now you're really hearing me in the name of Jesus. God's plan is bigger than a person. It's bigger than your idea. God will move. God is the most masterful chess player you want to know. Because he will move, excuse my friends, Kimberly keeping it real, he'll move your little booty right on out the way so that the work of God can go forth. 
Anybody that's going to hum, come and quench the spirit and put, put weight on what God wants to do to hold it back, our arms are too short to box for God. God has a wonderful way of just, you know how they say, you know, um, you in the play and it's time to make your exit. Be gone. That's the only way I can put it. Not to be mean, but God has a plan for souls to be saved in this last hour. Look at the temperature of our world internationally. Look at the temperature of America on our own soil. Look at what's going on. God is coming back and we must be prepared to be just like the U-Haul and take our arms and pull in all the souls that we can pull. Amen? In the name of Jesus. And I just hear, you know, I just hear the hope says, well, we can't do this and we can't do that. No. If you assist us, we've got young people in the in the congregation. We got young people in the congregation where if you send finances and you assist us, the young people could go do the work and the older people could go do the structure the, the, the strategy at the table. You see what I'm saying? There's a way that it can work where God gets the most optimum out of all of us. Amen? That's what the word says. We have to call those things that be not as they were. So that means it don't look like it. It don't look like I'm going to be sitting on Cherry Hill, but I promise before it's all over, Shay Shay going to be up there in the name of Jesus. Amen? It don't look like that I'm going to Africa or I'm going to Israel and going to India, but before it's all over, I promise you, I'll be on the plane to Israel, China, and Africa. Amen? Yes. Amen. Can I prepare you? Can I, can I prepare you? Can I do something new in you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God! Oh God, they shake him by Sacktonville. I'm real anointed, real churchy today. Watch out, Dad. I might come over there and shout in between your legs. You don't know what's going on. Bro Brother Eddie, I'm crazy. Watch out. Hey, God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for dealing with us. We thank you, God, for speaking to us. We thank you, Father God, that you're going to trust us to bring something new in the earth. Hey, God. Oh, Father God, we can birth it out. You can use us to birth out a new glory. You can use us to birth out a new anointing. You can use us, Father, to birth out a new blessing, Lord the God. The Bible says in Hosea, it's the first chapter, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and the children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. So if he's supposed to go take a wife, he said, go get a hoe and marry her. what it says. Amen? In the mighty name of Jesus. And so the Bible says he married her. Watch this. He married her. She was a, she was a hoe in the street and a good man of God married her. And after he married her, Shay Shay went back out to hoe in some more. <laughs> Dad, you would think after a while that if, so if you got married, you a hoe don't think they're going to get a good husband. But a good man of God married her, and she left the good man of God to hold some more. You want to work? Yeah, yes, right. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm down deep today. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we'll pick it up here in Hosea chapter two. Verse 5, going all the way down to maybe 7. It says, For their mother hath played the harlot. She conceived them and hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread, my water, and my wool, and my flax, and my mine oil, and my drink. She said she's going to get her a big daddy. I back that thing up and then you pay me. That's what it is. Let's break it down what it is. Let's not be politically correct. That's what it is. I back it up. You pay me. You take care of me. 
26, therefore behold, God said, I will hedge up thy way with horns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. Oh my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. When you want to do wrong, when that flesh is crying and you want to go to midnight, the creep creeper, the grim creeper, and you want to go smoke weed, and you want to go sniff some coke, and you want to get on the pipe, and you want to go leave your wife in the bed, or you want to leave your husband in the bed and do your own thing. God said, I'll put a hedge of protection around you where you can't even go. That gives you the revelation he'll keep you even when you don't want to be kept. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. See, God got away when you want to do wrong. The channel you was going to watch. Um, emergency. It's not on at this time. It's not on at this time. You waited till 3 o'clock in the morning thinking everybody was going to sleep and I was going to click in and get a little peek preview and the channel don't even work. 